What's up guys, Zach with Wired Customs, and I'm going to quickly show you how to rebuild one of these flathead Ford fuel pumps. Okay, so this is a bolus, a glassless bolus uh, fuel pump. So this is an early fuel pump. They used them all the way up until 1939 that I know of. Um, but it's 39 and older so that what these came with obviously they could get in the mix with the later um, fuel pumps Just as a replace and repair type situation, but these are very simple to rebuild at home You don't need to go and buy a fancy one online. That's made in China. You can use the original made in America parts and simple part kit here 11 alpha dash 9349 And you can see the name brand there Abco fuel pumps and parts. So this is the kit that you're going to need. It's going to come with a screen, some gaskets. These are our check valves in here. This is the spring for the pump itself. A new pump arm, which is nice. Not 100% necessary because I don't ever notice these actually wearing out. They're pretty nice, but if it's here, just replace it. This is our pump spring. Uh, the gasket for uh, the stand. This is the gasket for the top, then this is the actual pump itself. It's just a big plunger, guys. Very simple, very simple setup. So the first thing I'd recommend you to do, if yours is just a restoration type application, uh, get a scribe and scribe the top and bottom before you split it apart so you know which way to clock the fuel pump. Um, if you're going to original style fuel pump setup on original style car, you can buy some stock fuel lines and bolt it right up. If you clock this differently, you'll have to make or bend uh, your existing fuel lines. On my Model A, I put this pump on my flathead and I clocked it different because I liked how uh, the fuel lines were routed differently. So keep that in mind, these are clockable, but if you scribe it, you know exactly how it came off so you can go back together the correct way. Now, obviously this one is marked in the wrong direction. It's already been apart before I got it. That's not a problem. We'll flip it back forward and uh, try to clock it the correct way. So we're going to start with taking this cap off here. It's a 7 16 Break it loose. We should have a bolt. We should have a washer of some sort here. This is actually a gasket. So that needs to be replaced when we go back on. Here's our cap. Here's our old screen. And our little support for the screen there. So set those aside. Um, we're not going to be using any of that. Now we're going to take these screws out here. And this whole thing is going to split apart. So now these two are going to split apart. Here's our check valves up in there. Here's our plunger. Our plunger is being held in by the arm right here, the pump arm right here. So the pump arm is going to have to be, need to be taken off and unhooked from this plunger here. So here's our plunger. This is a little hook on the inside, and on the inside of the uh, on the inside of this, this hook is hooked into the plunger like that. So that's what you're going to be fighting. It's just a little bit of a pain to get apart, and you'll see what I mean once you start doing it yourself. Set this aside. And we're gonna rebuild the plunger part, which is a lot of fun, guys. Ready? <laughs> so I'm gonna pop this out here. I'm gonna pop that spring out. And that's gonna give us, uh, release some tension here. Then I'm gonna hit this pin out with a punch. This pin is holding this pump arm in. And once I can move this pump arm around enough, I can get it detached from uh, the plunger here itself. So now when the pin came out, I got lucky and it detached from the plunger. So everything can come out now and get cleaned. This is trash and I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's actually cracks here. There's cracks all the way around this. So there's a chance um, it wasn't working very well. Here's your old spring. I have a box full of these old parts. It's up to you if you wanna reuse it for anything. Um, sometimes these actually make good horn, 
springs. You can cut them down, and I use them on the early Ford horns because um, sometimes those springs are hard to get a hold of. So I like using those. Now I've had a problem with the kit's uh, pump gasket where it falls in on one side and it leaks uh, gas right out the top, which is not good. So what I like to do is get my own gasket, quart gasket, pretty thick here. Um, it is for fuel, so it's fuel resistant. You can pick these up in a pack at most auto parts stores. I think this is a felt pro pack. And what I'm gonna do is use the cap here. I'm gonna cut it around the cap. Then I have a uh, inch and eighth, and that's the inside diameter. And I'm gonna cut that out. So I'm gonna cut the smaller one out first, then I'll cut the bigger one out. It's just easier in steps like that. Um, you can also use a socket, but I try to make the gaskets as big as possible. They'll fit on the inside of this hat. Diameter is gone. And now I just have to center this up. A little bit of an impression to hold it in place because this part is important about size. And there's the outside. I'm just gonna check, see that it fits inside my cap here. So it's slightly too big for my cap, which I anticipated. So I'm gonna trim off the excess. And this will be good to go. Make sure it fits inside my bowl. Okay, so there we go. There's our homemade gasket. It is gasoline proof, so that should be good to go. And it should make these two up a lot better and gives us a little bit overhang than what this gasket would give us. So this is not going to fall in and uh, lose its seal. So next, we're gonna put our screen back on here and put our cap back in with the gasket. And that should all smash down nicely. So check your edges. The biggest importance is making sure that gasket uh, sit nice and flush all the way around. It's not pushed up or down or in on any one side here. So that looks good. Now I'm also going to make a gasket for this screw. Our kit doesn't come with the correct gasket. This is the type of situations you run into when you rebuild the early uh, fuel pumps instead of the bowl type fuel pumps. So what I'm going to do is cut a gasket out and uh, that's what we're going to use for this screw. I'm using the thinner cork gasket. And that should work nicely. Our cork seal, nice circle. It should look nice when it's all put back together. Now the important part when you screw this down is that the cork doesn't spin and get smushed out. Okay, I'm tightening it down and the cork is not spinning. So that's good. If it spins as it gets compressed down, uh, it could very well likely split and just rip open. You'll just have to make another one. That's snugged up. Now, when you put in these check valves, it's imperative that you blow into them so you know what direction they're supposed to go in. So let's air in. Doesn't let air in. These inlets are usually labeled on this style pump, so that's in. So we need to make sure the fuel can come in through that inlet. So this side is in. And it doesn't hurt to just trace it to make sure you're right so you don't just throw this in here. Now these do have gaskets, so let me grab the gasket to set those in there. So we'll put the gasket in here. My check valve in. Now this check valve is gonna be going out, so the side that you want to be facing up in this 
is the side that lets you blow air through it. So that side does not. So, well, gasket first. There it is. Put the gasket in. So they should be facing opposite directions because both check valves are the exact same check valve. They're just faced in opposite directions. We have a little spring holder here. So that's going to be grabbing them and holding them in place. Then our two screws that holds the spring holder down. Pretty straightforward. Then all we need is a Phillips to screw those in. So there's our fully completed top. So the plunger and the hook face the exact same direction. So the hook is up, plunger is up, vice versa, okay? This hook has to go inside the pump and grab through the plunger like this. So that's the hard part, guys. So we're gonna be trying to set this in here, trying to pin it and trying to hook it all at the same time. So I'm just gonna <laughs> describe it at the beginning and you can just watch me do it because it's not as easy as it looks. So now here's the thing. If your original plunger is in good working order and the little ribbon here is not flat and worn out, um, I would reuse it only because of these new ones are a little bit thinner, a little bit more flexible, and they're just not as overall nice. On top of that, this are two pieces and the original ones are one piece. This is one solid piece all the way through and it's pinned right here. Well, I guess it's not one piece all the way through, but you see what I'm saying? It's it's pinned together. This is held together. This is not held together. This makes this a really big pain in the butt. So I'm gonna use the original just cause it's better. Now I put red tacky on it cause it's a, uh, a spot that's gonna be moving quite a bit. Just want a little bit of lubricant in there. This clocks where the plunger goes. So this always has to be facing the rear like that. Okay, let's install our new pump spring. There it is. Now here's our other spring. So make sure you put the spring here. Uh, so before we set this in there, make sure you put the spring underneath it. So that's why this fight is a little bit difficult. Okay, now that we have the pin in, we can keep rocking and rolling and uh, we can check our that everything's moving freely. So that's good. Now we can go ahead and put the top back on. And there is our rebuild fuel pump. All right, guys, after you put it back together, make sure you always do your checks. You're gonna pump this to make sure we have spring tension. You can hear the pump working actually right now. I'm gonna put my finger on the inlet and pump it a few times. It should be a suction. There's a suction. This should be pressurized. Pressurized. This just passed the bench test. I always do that and I always double check. Um, you guys might not like this, but I also uh, suck on the inlet side to make sure I can't get air back out. Um, a lot of times when these mess up, they'll pull gas in, then push gas back out into the fuel line. This is the original housing to this pump. Um, I rebuilt it, got it all together, put new check valves in it. I did this test at the inning and it did not pass my bench test. Finds out or ends up that there's a crack right here in the housing on the inside. It's kind of hard to see, but that's letting the air back and forth between the check valves. They're like they're connected just because of that. Now they're not. I had to replace it with a new top. Well, it's not new. It's my old personal stock that I fixed this with, but that's too bad because this one cleaned up so nicely. It looked so good, but that doesn't mean it's a good housing. So this housing is trash. This one works. Our pump is ready to go. So thank you for watching this video, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe. Now that you have this information, do this yourself. Get out in the garage and get your ship together.